Okay, hey guys, welcome to class. Today we're gonna to be learning about the Zhou Dynasty. Now we left off by learning about the Shang Dynasty and the Shang Dynasty is going to be followed by the Zhou Dynasty. So you're gonna get started. We are going to be going to the document that's posted to classroom called the Zhou Dynasty. And you are going to be using this document in order to help you fill in the notes about the China Notes document. So open up your China Notes document and scroll down to the Zhou Dynasty. Now you can feel free to pause this video at any time, especially if you need a little bit more time to catch up with filling in the notes on your China Notes document. Now we already filled in about the Shang Dynasty, so now you want to scroll right to the Zhou Dynasty and we'll get started there. Okay, so we left off um, learning about the Shang Dynasty. Yes, it's Shang, almost like you're hitting a gong. Gong Shang, and now we're learning about the Zhou Dynasty. Now I said Zhou, like J O. Um, that Z H sound is going to make make more of a J sound. So Zhou Dynasty. You can practice saying it out loud. Nobody will laugh at you. <laughs> I'm laughing. No, I'm not. Okay. The Zhou Dynasty often attacked the Shang Dynasty. They were neighbors with each other. So as they were neighbors, they would be attacking each other. Um, the Zhou Dynasty eventually comes in, they overthrow the Shang Dynasty, they get rid of all of the kings, all of the nobles, and now they declare themselves the new rightful kings. They say that the Shang Dynasty was not a very good dynasty. Um, the reason that we know that is because they had lost what they said was the mandate of heaven. The mandate, that word mandate means law. So the mandate of heaven is the approval of the gods to rule. So in this picture that we have over here, we see, um, ooh, can I do a pointer? I can. Okay. Ooh. In this picture that we have over here, we see that it's almost as though the gods are giving the power to the emperor in order for him to rule. Um, if heaven did not like what the king was doing, then they would send natural disasters in order to show their disapproval. Now, we've seen this before. We saw this in um, Egypt when we were learning about the Nile River. And when people were upset with the pharaoh, um, if the Nile River didn't flood, that was one way that you could tell that the people were upset. Uh, they also believed that the king had lost the um, mandate. And... Um, because he had lost the mandate, he could now be overthrown. So the Zhou dynasty is going to say that the Shang dynasty had lost that mandate of heaven. Um, these are not the only dynasties that follow this cycle. We're going to see that a little bit later on. Every dynasty of China, and there's something like 30 different dynasties, they're all going to follow this same cycle of going from one having the mandate of heaven, losing it, and then another one replacing it. This next word that we have here is feudalism. This word is actually a really big part of the seventh grade social studies curriculum as well. So you're gonna see this word again. It's a system of government based on landowners and tenants. So out of all these people that we see over here, which person do you think owns the land? Ding, 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 ding. That's right, it's the king. The king is going to be the one who owns all of the land. The king is going to give little parts of the land to his lords. Think of the lords as almost like the governors. They're controllers of different parts of the kingdom. Um, those lords, of course, they can't get their hands dirty doing some hard labor, so they have peasants who are gonna come in and farm all of that land. So like that picture I used because the little farmers, they're standing in rice paddies because rice has to grow in water. Remember that video you watched? I hope you do. Um, so the peasants are gonna be farming all the land. They have to give the majority of the crops that they have back to the lords. And then the lords, they have to show their thanks to the king by sending the king different soldiers. Um, this little setup over here, you should see a little bit of a triangle here because it is your social pyramid that we've learned so much about in every different society. One of the problems that we have here is that the lords, they start to grow in power. And as the lords start to grow in power, now we see that the lords are starting to fight with each other. And each of the lords, their ego gets a little bit bigger. And as their ego gets a little bit bigger, they're going to start to declare themselves kings. And that's going to bring us to the dun, 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 time of the warring states. And in the time of the warring states, each of the individual states are going to be at war with each other. So right here, this is the Zhou Dynasty, a little bit of a different spelling, and that's just because Chinese doesn't translate perfectly into English. Um, 
the king of the Zhou dynasty, uh, he will then be at war with each of the warring states. Um, and when all of these states are at battle with each other, fighting over who is more powerful or who has a bigger boundary, um, this is going to be a time of turmoil. Thus, my background of a fiery death stone all around and blood and weapons and rolling limbs. It's going to be a time of um, a lot of distrust. And one of the things we're going to see coming about in this time is everyone's idea as to how you get back to a peaceful society. So I mentioned that idea of the dynastic cycle. We start off with the first dynasty. They have the approval of the gods. Oh the mandate of heaven. Um, step two, that dynasty's power starts to grow a little bit weaker. The way that um, we are going to know that their power is growing weaker is by step three, disasters such as floods, famines, and invasion. This is the way that the gods and the ancestors can communicate with the people that they are upset with the king. Um, the people believe now that the dynasty has started to lose the gods' approval, so therefore they have every right to overthrow that dynasty, and step six, a new dynasty restores peace and order. Um, in this picture, you see that they use a dragon to kind of show this cycle of going around, and you should notice that a dragon is a very popular symbol throughout uh, ancient China and still today. So at this time, I would like you to open the assignment on Classroom, name the Dynastic Cycle student cartoon. So there's going to be two different um, presentations that are posted there. You don't want to open the class presentation. You want to open the student cartoon. Just give me a moment, and I'll transition into that as well. So oh, the Dynastic Cycle cartoon is going to be a project that you will be doing. Um, the Dynastic Cycle was the way that China transitioned between its many uh, dynasties. You are going to take those six steps, and we have those six steps uh, written over here as well. And you are going to be taking those six steps over here. <laughs> and you're going to be taking those six steps and you're going to be putting them into a cartoon. Um, I don't want you to become overwhelmed. This is a very simple, very easy project. It's a project I've done with my classes um, for many years and they actually really like it because it requires a little bit more creativity that you can put into it. Um, your cartoon is going to consist of six squares. Each square is going to match up to the six steps. So square one will be somewhat similar to step one. Um, you're not going to have the same captions. You're going to be kind of putting those captions into your own words. Um, okay. So in the presentation, I set up here a sample project for you. So this one is Toys R Us to Amazon. So in step one, everyone goes, goes to Toys R Us and it is the top toy store in the world. That's kind of the equivalent to saying that Toys R Us has that mandate of heaven. Um, step two, people start complaining about the very high prices. We're starting to see that people are a little upset with Toys R Us or the dynasty. Um, many toys are out of stock and they do not offer free two-day shipping. So um, slide number three up here is the most important because that is the same as the disasters, the floods, the famines, the invasions, and that was a really big part of the dynastic cycle. So you need to think to yourself, in this cartoon where we're going from Toys R Us to Amazon, what would be the equivalent of a natural disaster for Toys R Us? So the natural disaster for Toys R Us is that they don't have toys in stock and they don't offer free two-day shipping. So now we go to um, number four, no one shops there anymore and they lose thousands of dollars. Slide five, people look for a new place to shop and Toys R Us stores close down. Lastly, everyone loves Amazon because of their large selection and Amazon is now the top toy store in the world, which would be the equivalent of being the mandate of heaven. Um, now, this is just one example that I have from a student in the past. You're going to be making your own example. Please do not use Toys R Us and Amazon. That is not your example. I want your example. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, another student example that we have here is the dynastic cycle of school. Anything technology related is very easy because you can clearly see why people would transition from one piece of technology or dynasty to another piece of technology or dynasty. So here we have every student in the school is required to use pencil and paper. Um, they begin to think that they're not so great. Remember slide three was the most important, the natural disasters. All of the pencil points start breaking and the pencil sharpeners are filling very quickly. So we see the people are pretty upset with using pencils. Now we start to move into people using computers and Chromebooks instead. Um, again, use your own creative example. Please do not use this example. So this slide right here on the presentation is where you would actually edit and put in your own uh, project. This slide is the only part of the presentation that you need to do. So here you would change the title of the cartoon to the title. Here you would put into your name and then this would be where your six different parts of your cartoon would be. When you are finished with your cartoon, just like we did with the misinterpretation presentation, you are then going to copy. Um, and in order to copy, you want to click over on the sidebar on the actual slide, hit Control C to copy, then click into where you want to put it on the class presentation and Control V to paste. So your project is going to be graded as a supplemental out of 15 points. Um, and you can look at the last slide here, you want to make sure that you're following the steps of the dynastic cycle, your cartoon makes sense, your cartoon is neatly formatted, it has a title. Um, you want to make sure that you put your slide into the class presentation. This way you're going to be able to share your presentation with the rest of the class. And um, you want to make sure that your cartoon is clever and creative. Um, this might be something that maybe you take a break for a couple hours and you think about what would be something that you could go from. Maybe one ice cream flavor to another ice cream flavor. Um, one quarterback of a football team to another quarterback of a football team. Maybe it's something about your little TikTok things that you do. I don't know. You pick out what you want to do. Um, if you have any questions about this assignment, you can go and post those questions on Classroom or on the Padlet and I'll be able to get back to you. But I just wanted to provide a little bit more detail on this by posting a video. Um, and of course, I know you miss me so much. Just joking. Okay, have a good day and good luck.